Up next on WAP News Tonight, he's slowly carving away at Mary Landrieu's lead in an election held yesterday. We'll have the latest. Also tonight, the famous network TV anchor who apparently didn't know he was on the air live. You'll see it. And the stakes going up at LSU tonight on selecting a new top man or woman. Next. More people get their news from WAFB News than any other source. They were both holding news conferences today, taking shots at each other. Mary says Woody needs to get a grip on reality. Good evening, I'm George Sells. And I'm Donna Britt. Mary Landrieu's victory over Woody Jenkins is shrinking tonight as more complete but unofficial returns come in. The final and official count won't be certain until next Wednesday, though a tentative recount should be available this Friday. Woody Jenkins, in the meantime, is claiming voter fraud may have won Landrieu the election. The Jenkins crowd, which hadn't given up hope for a victory, was openly hostile to Landrieu's victory speech in the early hours of this morning. They booed and jeered her references to God and family. This morning, Landrieu defended her win. Today, numbers have trimmed Landrieu's lead from 10,000 to more like 6,000, and Jenkins is refusing to concede, suggesting there might be voting irregularities. But Mr. Jenkins has had some difficulty dealing with reality through the whole entire campaign. Now the reality is, is that we have 10,000 vote leads. No election in Louisiana has ever been overturned with more than 2,500 votes. We had not one complaint yesterday of any voter irreg irregularity. Landrieu is planning a tour of the state over the next two days to thank voters in person. Next week, she'll be in Washington getting her Senate committee assignments. Meanwhile, a surprise state government official tells WAFP News that Woody Jenkins, in all seriousness, said in a private conversation today that he is absolutely convinced that he, not Mary Landrieu, won the election. Jenkins isn't going that far in public, but he called a news conference to announce he's forming what he calls a highly trained team of election experts to look for voter fraud or voting irregularities. So far, Jenkins acknowledges he has no proof. I wanted this election to be over last night, up or down. But there's no way we can walk away when we have such a close race. He says until they have all the facts together. In the meantime, the Secretary of State's office will be issuing election count updates twice a day at 9 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon from tomorrow through next Wednesday. Governor Mike Foster, you'll remember, endorsed Jenkins for Senate. And today the governor is supporting Jenkins' claim that the race is not over. Foster says this election is proof the gambling industry's money can affect Louisiana politics. He believes the pro-gambling vote buoyed Landrieu as well. If I wasn't convinced before, after the outcome of this election, I am totally convinced and will take to the Supreme Court defense of, the U U.S. Supreme Court defense of not letting gambling money come directly into the political process Governor Foster says he still believes Louisiana is a conservative state, despite Democrat Landrieu's showing in yesterday's election. East Baton Rouge uh, voters approved one form of gambling and rejected another, as we told you last night. The, the riverboat casinos passed with 59% of the vote. That was the final count, 59%. But video poker failed by a 10% margin. The gaming devices won't be officially outlawed until June of 1999, two and a half years from now. But state police will not issue any new license, b licenses between now and then. The owner of Mr. Lucky's Game Room says he's disappointed with the outcome of the video poker vote. But Frost Top owner Skipper McGinnis says he's pleased with the voters' decision, even though he offers video poker at his restaurant. Uh, I personally voted against it. I feel that it's not best for the society. It'll hurt the store for a while. Uh, video poker probably saved us down here about three years ago. And uh, since then, we built some business back up, and things are doing well enough now to where I think we'll survive without it. McGinnis said...